Hello, this is Martin, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program. This is episode 2, where we're going to attempt to go orbital. I'm also trying out a new recording style. I'll ask Scott Manley. He's my favorite Kerbal Space player. Kerbal Space Program player. Uh, anyway, I'll link to him in the comments. So, let's see. Oh, I've also fixed the fuel bug, uh, and I'll link to that as well, the, the fix for it. Uh, so, yeah, the difference, of course, this time is as I'm recording it afterwards. The audio. Uh, so let's have a look. This is the suborbital ship that we did last time. Ended up having a little bit too much power. Probably could have been orbitable. orbital. But, uh, oh well. Let's get rid of that and start something new. Same command pod. And let's see. I don't think people really need to see my design process. This is going to be another easy one. So I'm probably going to skip ahead on this. And you can just watch a little bit of a montage of me making the ship. And we're back. So this is the ship I've chosen. I did a uh, gimbling engine in the middle and a slightly more powerful engine on the outside, and now I'm going to give it another brilliantly original name. Orbital 1. Haha. <laughs> now I'm just checking the staging. Oh, of course, yeah, I've got to move that down there so all the engines fire at once. I did put some fuel uh, dealies in between the two, so these will run out first, uh, leaving the middle tanks full while the middle engine is still able to run. So we're here on the launch pad, and let's see, just wait for the physics to catch on. We're going to put on the SAS, full throttle of course. I don't know what the SAS does. Actually, I don't think I put it on. So there we go, we're launched. Jebediah back in the launcher seat. Launcher seat, pilot seat. A little bit loud again, sorry about that. Hopefully you can still hear me. Slight tilt over to the east. to be in the overall scheme of things when you head to the east. So that's one tank done. I'm just trying to kind of keep it on the level. A train going by here uh, in the real world in the background. You might be able to hear that. Jebediah's having a grand old time. Okay, now we can actually definitely hear me. Probably should have been tilting over a little earlier, looking at the altitude now. It's one thing uh, when you're manually controlling it, fully manually, instead of using SAS or MechJev or something. Uh, certainly don't really pay too much attention. Whoops, see we're already at 82, 83 kilometers high. So, cut the engines, tilt on over for prograde burn when I hit the apoapsis. And look how much fuel I have left too, barely even there's there's that train. Probably heard that. Tons of fuel left for uh, the circularization burn. If I were to leave it now, of course, this would just be a suborbital flight. Crash probably just on the other side of this ocean. Nope, not not even like all the way through. And I just noticed uh, still have that suborbital uh, flight back over there on the other side. I guess I I must have ended it for uh, was it Bill? and then uh, not ended it for the capsule itself, so it's uh, still sitting over there. And we've got our debris there, going to fall back. So we get another minute to apoapsis. Not much else to uh, to mention now. Great view from up here, eh, Jeb? So 75 kilometers high now. I probably should have started my burn now. Uh, Instead, I'm playing around with rotating, rotating the capsule to to get the sky on the top and the ground on the bottom. Not really necessary, but makes the controlling a little more intuitive. So I'm paying attention to that instead of the fact that I am pretty much at the apoapsis. Having a further look out. 
again. Now I'm. There's no harm in firing a little bit before the apple apsis. There is a harm in firing after the apple apsis when you start falling, and that's that you might start getting caught back up in uh, atmosphere, and you'll be pushing against the atmosphere with your engines and losing all sorts of efficiency, and possibly even just falling back to Kerbin. In this case, though, uh, there's a good amount of fuel left, but this is also an incredibly light rocket, so the thrust-to-weight ratio is very high. And uh, that's actually going to cause a bit of a problem in a moment. But you'll see about that. So we're just circularizing. I am falling back now. I'm losing altitude. Can't see it there, but probably back down to the 70s. Just about circular now. That apoapsis is drifting back. Okay, there we have a periapsis. I should cut the engines now. Let's see, that's where I think I should have been burning a little bit before the apoapsis because now I've got a bit of an irregular orbit, a bit eccentric. But I need to pull this up a little bit on this end anyway, still, just to not get back in the atmospheric effects. Oh yeah, there we go. Whoops, 180 something by 70. Yeah. That's not so good. But what we'll do is we'll just accelerate to the periapsis. And you know what? We'll do a retrograde burn when we hit the periapsis. And that should bring down the apoapsis. Keep it a little bit circular. So we got about 30 seconds to go. I need to flip the ship around. So thankfully we can control it on the map. View. To do. Get it close. It's close enough. Yeah, that's, that's close enough. There we go. Now we'll just burn. Yeah, we're going. Whoops. Whoa. Yeah. See, that's a. Uh, whoa. Yeah, that's back in the atmosphere on the other side there now. That's not so good. Uh, so we'll just go <laughs> prograde now. Yeah, we'll just fix that. So you see, I went, I went and did a full burn there before. So let's see if I notice that maybe I don't need that much power. Nope. Yep. That was still a lot of power. You know what? That's okay. We're just gonna leave it. We're gonna uh, see what take stock here. Okay. So interesting. It's showing a bit of specific impulse still. Uh, but how much fuel do we have left? That's the, the key. We've circularized a couple times now. Wasted a little bit. But, uh, well, look at that. Was that 270 some liters? That's pretty impressive. Lots left. Could probably, man, eh, probably couldn't go to the moon and back, but, uh, I mean, that's way more than we need to just do uh, some orbital maneuvers or land or what have you. But I think what we're going to do this time is just land, because, you know, it's good to just you know, the first space program. You know, we've just had our first suborbital. Now we'll just lose our first orbital. So we'll come around. Geez, what about I don't know, 80, 70 degrees maybe from from where we want to land? We'll do a retrograde burn somewhere around there, I guess. That's I've had a bit of experience. I'm getting a little bit better at this. Uh, it's hard to try to land, do a precision landing, but of course I'm going to try to land on Kerbin or Kerbal Space Center (KSC). Using the SAS there, even though it probably doesn't really do anything. Anyway, so we'll give it a little bit of a retro burn. Now I'm realizing, of course, we don't need to do a huge, powerful burn. Because look at that, that's fast. And there we go. So that's my eyeballing and, and just, you know, trial and error over time. That's where I've found uh, that, you know, you get a fairly close to KSP reentry. So we just warp ahead there, now we're in the atmosphere. And, uh, yeah, let's see, uh, oh, but the, the planet does rotate while, they're, while uh, you do that time acceleration and while you're just floating along there. So I'm a little worried that I'm going to come up short. So what I'm going to do is just raise that re-entry point there a little bit. Flip the rocket around, and I'll just do a total uh, north burn. Is this a... Uh, Rad Plus, I think they they call it on uh, MacJet. So, whoop, just a little, just a little burn there. Put the uh, 
where it shows I'm going to intersect with the land now, back on the other side of that little peninsula, I guess. And uh, just thinking about thinking about an EVA. No, better not do that. It's getting a little late now. We're already technically in the atmosphere, although there's not really any atmospheric effects doing anything yet. Not slowing us down. We're still speeding up. That was just a yeah, quick little burn. Still tons of fuel. Barely used anything on that retrograde burn. And that's even with the fuel fix on. So, so you can see there. Oh yeah, we just you know t 20 liters of fuel maybe for the the uh, the deorbit burn and the deorbit fix as well. That's kind of pretty. Just looking down, watch the world go by as we re-enter. We'll just do a screenshot there. Where's that sun, though? Yeah, okay. Just by the time we get over there, it'll, uh, we might even be getting the sunset. So, you can see the, the Kerbin's still rotating underneath us, and we're now starting to get some drag. You can see the acceleration slowed down quite a bit. It's just about peak speed here. We'll be slowing down for real. And let's see, just a little accelerate there. I've got to keep my videos under 15 minutes for now. Hopefully we'll get that fixed at some point. I know from other YouTube channels I have, it doesn't take that long and they give it to you a little bit longer. Alright, so let's see where are we here. We're, you can see that where it's predicting we're going to be landing is rapidly moving west towards KSC. I mistakenly said KSP there earlier. I'm getting those all confused. So we're just going to clear these mountain range. Uh, look at that speed. It's perhaps coming down a little too quickly. we got a 1G of deceleration there. Overall, really nice gentle re-entry. Nice shallow angle, you know. Uh, when they add the heat effects in, I'll just uh, get rid of that stage there. When they add those heat effects in, I think uh, shouldn't be any problem with that sort of re-entry. Of course, you wouldn't have wanted to do that with the uh, bottom stage on there. Let's do another screenshot. Uh, would have wanted to eject that off earlier. Of course, if you eject it too early, though, you can't do any uh, corrections. But anyway, uh, look at that speed coming down to. 1200 meters per second. And that uh, space center, I don't have any debris there, so I can't see how far it is, but uh, it's looking like we're going to come up short. So I'm not going to deploy the parachutes anytime soon because they do provide a little bit of extra drag. Well, the parachute. Jeb's still thrilled. We're getting some wind now, reaching the uh, denser part of the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely short. We are just coming up on 45 degrees uh, angle down. Oh yeah, look at that. Ah, well, you know that was pretty close. That was we're coming down within driving distance anyway. We can send send out the uh, send out the bus to pick us up. So you can see as soon as that parachute's out, the uh, similar velocity that the debris in us had is rapidly changing. So yeah, there it is. Ah, it's not bad. We'll try to get it a little closer next time. I think uh, for the next video I'm going to, there's a Reddit uh, it's re redoing the uh, weekly challenges, so maybe I'll go back and try to redo one of the older ones. In the meantime, we're going to watch that hit the ground. Nice. And we're going to accelerate like last time. And there we have it, back on the ground after our first orbital mission. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.